Good evening. This morning in your groups, you spoke about the theme of listening. What were the things that you discovered in that time of sharing? During these days, can you hold them in your hearts so that they may grow and take root? And perhaps further thoughts will come to you. Would it be an idea to note these down and thus further your reflection? When we journey together in such a way, especially when each of us comes with the desire to listen and no one imposes their views or actions on the other, our meeting can often be so powerful. Our own contribution is important, but what we receive from others, though it may challenge us, often deepens our understanding of who we are and we are enriched by it. Jesus himself also experienced this in his life on earth. Yesterday I spoke of the young adults who have prepared this meeting. Most of them spent time as volunteers in Teze before coming to Ljubljana in September together with three Teze brothers and two sisters of St. Andrew. They were well supported by the youth pastoral service for the Archdiocese of Ljubljana and by several local young people. And Philip, you come from the far north, from Sweden. I have a question for you. What was most important as you journeyed together with the local churches here in Ljubljana? For me, the most important thing has been trying to be present, to simply spend time with the local people and parishes, to get to know the body of Christ here in Slovenia, and by being together in all simplicity, deepening our connections and friendships. It has also been important for me to try to be attentive, to see the glimpses of how the Holy Spirit is constantly working in this country and what the Christians here has to offer to the global church. Lastly, it has been important to be with this group of brothers and sisters and local and international volunteers to live and work and discovering more and more of the Slovenian culture together to share our experiences and look at the, looking at them from the different perspectives that we all have. And that has really helped me to deepen in my faith and the way I look at God. And Marjorie, you've come all the way from Brazil. Yeah? What was the greatest joy for you during the preparation? Um, for me, uh, the greatest joy was actually being with the people that I met here. Um, when I arrived in Ljubljana, um, although I was very excited and I had the desire to be here, I was also afraid. Um, I was afraid of not feeling welcomed and also was afraid of not being enough for this task. Some weeks ago, I went uh, with other volunteers to a school and we had a prayer with the students. And in a moment of thanksgiving, um, the students could say, what they were thankful for. And one of them said, I'm thankful because you are here with us. So this little but unexpected moments uh, bring me so much joy. And at the same time, um, it makes me realize that my journey can also be a sign of joy for others. Thank you both very much. We're all very grateful to you and to the whole team for your perseverance for, and also the for the willingness of our hosts to open their doors. Thank you. <laughs> Welcoming a stranger comes straight from the heart of the gospel. As he journeyed, Jesus excluded no one who came to him recognizing the presence of God, even in those from the margins of society 
and people from a different ethnic or religious background. In the same way, simple hospitality offered in a selfless manner challenges our way of living today. Are we not often taught to defend our own interests and the interests of similar-minded people? When we live in such a manner, our view becomes narrower and we become locked in our own comfort zone. Of course, our fears may be well-founded and need to be listened to. But as we journey with Jesus, he wants to lead us towards a fullness of life that perhaps we had never imagined before. But Jesus does all this with incredible sensitivity, respecting our freedom and giving us the time that we need in order to take the next step forward. In the passage we heard from John's Gospel this evening, the friends of Jesus are afraid. They no longer really understand what is going on. They have grasped that he will not be with them for much longer, that his love for them and all humanity will lead to his death, and their hearts are troubled. Jesus tells them, however, that he will not abandon them. He will always go before them to prepare a place for them. When Thomas expresses his disbelief with the words, we do not know where you are going, how can we know the way? Then Jesus reassures him. Because what Jesus asks, he also gives. He himself is the path. We can trust what he says, and he is the source of an abundance of life. Even when he himself is faced with terrible distress, Jesus is ready to listen to the fears of his friends, to walk with them in their anxiety. And this is a way of showing his love, a love which will so soon come to its deepest expression when he gives his life on the cross. And that love will turn out to be stronger than death. Is it not this love, stronger than death, that allows us to face life head on? Yet this love is a humble love, which leaves space for the other, respects their limits and walks with them. We discover in this way fellow pilgrims who are ready to share our journey with us in the community of believers, which is the church, the body of Christ, but also in society. Tomorrow in your groups, you will speak about finding the balance between being alone and being with others. How do these two levels connect? It's an important theme. As it says in the letter 2024, the strings of a guitar lie side by side, but it is when they are played together that they make a beautiful sound. Our evening prayer will continue with a time of prayer around the icon of the cross. All of you who wish may come and pray at the cross to entrust to Jesus your worries and troubles, as well as situations of suffering in the world. And this evening we think especially of the Ukraine, the cities that were bombed during the last night, and we think also of the population in Gaza suffering also under bombardment. Christ welcomes each one of us as we are, and as he did in his life on earth, walks with us in our questioning and doubt, just as he shares our joy. Nothing can separate us from his love. <laughs>